Play it on Xbox One. Hello and welcome to the fourth and final Forza Horizon 4 live stream from Playground Games in the UK and this week it's spring. Each week we've been showing you a different season from the game and now we're moving on to the fourth and final season to take a look at but we've got so much for you coming up in the stream. We're going to be taking a look at the brand new game, it's some brand new information on the game soundtrack, something I know a lot of you are eager to learn more about. We've also got some inside info on the audio of Forza Horizon 4, including an exclusive look at the recording of the Forza Horizon 4 cover car, the McLaren Senna. We also have a big reveal of Forza Horizon 4 brand new team-based competitive online mode, Team Adventure, which is pretty exciting, and we've also will visit the city of Edinburgh, which I'm really excited about. And for all of you watching at home, watching on Mixer, you're going to have a chance of winning this in-game cosmetic item. Just get involved in the chat and you may have a chance of getting your hands on the code for that item in Forza Horizon 4. But you know what? I am joined by the ever-present Ralph and Ben to talk us through the game. Thank you so much. Spring, tell us about it. It's here, isn't it? Yeah, this is the, this is the fourth and final of the, of the seasons. It's yeah. the fourth and final live stream that we're doing here from Playground. Um, we've come all the way through the year uh, and spring is the, is the season we're going to be showing today. It's radically different visually from, from what we showed last week in winter. You get that same sensation in game, I think, that you do in the, in, in the real world when winter turns to spring and, and life comes back to the, uh, to the environment. The, yeah. The, the trees regain their leaves, the, the world is carpeted in beautiful flowers, um, and, and there's a fair bit of rain as well in the UK. And also, we mentioned Team Adventure, which is I'm really excited about seeing. What have we got going on? Oh, so we've got, a, we've got an awesome head-to-head uh, -head battle with uh, two, two teams, uh, Simply the Test. Uh, who, are, who are the name given to a team of guys in the studio who are representing the test team, and then we've got um, Designosaurs. Designosaurs. Designosaurs, of course, yeah. Brilliant name uh, for uh, representing. Who, who do you uh, think's going to kind of take home the crown? Uh, well, so, uh, technically, simply the test is being represented by CJ, who was the best man at my wedding. So, uh, my, yeah, you, uh, you kind of... I, I kind of have to back that team, really, don't I? Uh, and what, what about you, Ralph? Uh, so, I, I'm obviously impartial, but um, I, I do <laughs> believe that the designers will, uh, will, will take it. I mean, this is, this is two teams, obviously. Um, it's, a, it's a big grudge match. These these guys really uh, really don't like each other. Um, <laughs> so uh, um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be fun to watch. And also, I think uh, you know, more seriously, it's gonna be great for people who have been asking throughout these streams. Show us uh, Team Adventure. We've kind of mentioned it before. It's the the brand new uh, online PvP like truly competitive mode yeah. uh, that we have in the game. Uh, obviously, you can tell from the name, it's team-based, uh, and we're going to be showing that off and, and exactly how it works uh, a little bit later on. I am excited. But first, we're going to be taking a look at spring itself. So I think we should kind of get ourselves into some gameplay mm. because let's see those changes. We've seen, we've seen summer, we've seen autumn, we've seen winter, and now we get to see spring, which I'm really excited about because it's like, it's, it's like autumn and spring are always some of my favorite seasons in the year. Yeah. So, because it's, it's nice and cool, it's not too hot, and like the baking heat we've had over the past couple of weeks. Uh, but where are we in the world? So we are actually towards the sort of north end of the Lake District, sort of on the border of what we would consider the English versus Scottish part of our map. Um, and yeah, as you can see, uh, Ralph already mentioned it, but it's a radically different visual to obviously the winter that we showed you last week. So uh, all of the leaves have started to return to some of the trees, some have sort of stayed skeletal and sort of give you that really nice um, difference in the silhouette interest in the world that is very specific to spring. We've also got loads uh, of uh, loads more moisture sort of ambiently in the world. So it's our wettest season uh, in Britain that's represented in games. So you get a lot of that standing water, lots of the deformable mud that we talked about in autumn. Uh, but but also, the, the lighting model is also now updated with all the sky captures that we've got from the spring season in real life. So you get a slightly higher sun arc than you would in, uh, in winter, so you, the days are slightly longer. You get a little bit more brightness generated in the environment. Uh, and also, you get all these really lovely pops of colour. So you get all the wildflowers that start to carpet the, uh, the woodland. All the trees start to explode with little blossoms. We know how much you love trees. I do love the trees, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a very, it's a very fresh visual. Um, and I think that's, that's the thing for me that really um, 
typifies spring in Britain, yeah. that really fresh, crisp feel. And, uh, and uh, most of that comes from the excellent lighting work that the guys have done upstairs. I just noticed Andy just took his wing mirror out. It was just kind of like, that doesn't need that going around in spring. Um, so we have seen like the big changes of like all the seasons over the past four weeks. Uh, one of the biggest things I want to know is how is that going to continue to change uh, from after launch of the game? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's, a, that's a great question because the last four weeks we've been showing kind of what the first four weeks, I guess, will be like uh, when the game launches uh, later this year. Um, everyone in the community will be taken through uh, these seasons sequentially, just like in real life. Um, but I think, and we mentioned this at E3, um, our commitment, I think, uh, from this team to, to the people who are going to play the game uh, is that the changes don't stop there. It's not just the four seasons will change in the ways we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Um, the game is going to ch keep changing uh, after launch as we continue yep. to support it, as we continue to create new content for it, create new features for it, add stuff to the game. And really, the point behind the seasons, uh, their transitions, the timing, that weekly cadence of, of seasons yeah. uh, post-launch is so that we can continue to deliver um, amazing stuff to this game. Some stuff that we have planned, some stuff I think that you know will come from feedback from the community. Yeah. Um, post-launch and not just for for months but I think you know for years uh, after this game ships yeah like which is really exciting as well it's kind of like getting community feedback and seeing what they want as well uh, which is why as well if you're watching a mixer remember get involved ask any questions you have for Ralph or Ben about spring or anything to do with Forza Horizon 4 we can answer them right here and now uh, but also we last week we took a look at the winter map and I know we also have the spring map, which is going to go out on the Forza Motorsport um, social channel. So it's at Forza Motorsport and also at Forza Motorsport official on Instagram. So worth looking at here, I think. I, I don't think we've shown the forest just yet. Um, if Andy keeps driving and maybe goes a little bit off the, um, off the track, um, I think there's probably an interesting thing Definitely for people who have played Horizon games before, for people that have played Horizon 3 in particular, uh, we've had a lot of feedback on, um, how to put it, uh, tree language, I guess, or smashable language, we call it in the studio. It's something that we've actually worked on a great deal in, in this game. Basically, the, the feedback from, from 3 is that you don't know as you're approaching a tree if it's going to break or if it's going to stop you dead. Yeah. Uh, and that gets pretty uh, frustrating. That's something that we have spent a, you know, a lot of time on during this game working on. Uh, we've worked on a system whereby Hopefully, and I think you can probably see it here, the thickness of trees is very clear as you're driving even through a thick forest like this one, so that you always have a pretty good confidence level as to what's going to break uh, when your car hits it and what's actually going to kind of break your car when you hit it. Um, and as a result, and I'm going to challenge Andy to, do, to prove me right now, um, <laughs> uh, which might be a mistake, um, it's actually much easier to drive through wooded areas, even through dense forests like this, if you compare it maybe to the, the rainforest from, uh, from Forza Horizon 3, um, which was a pretty perilous place to try and drive through. I think most people ended up just taking the roads through it. Um, it's actually much clearer and much more readable as a player uh, in Horizon 4. So that's something, it's kind of low level, but it's something that we're pretty proud of. And I think players will appreciate when they really get into the, uh, into the game. Yeah, it does look incredible as well. It's so much fun as well. Like all, the, all the trees, all the kind of like spring colors popping out and just being able to kind of traverse through that world. Because I, I know I was guilty of that in Forza Horizon 3. Every time I'm going through a rainforest, I just hit a tree dead hit my rewind as much as possible and try and find that perfect route through. Um, it's quite excited to try this out. Um, but what else can people pick up with spring, Ben? Uh, with spring? Uh, well, so I kind of already talked a lot about what... Yeah. <laughs> I, you <laughs> know, you've all the colour. I, 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 so I saw the snowy mountain peaks in the distance. Well, so, that's, that, like... so that's true, yeah. So, so actually, you do get a bit of residual snow. That sort of, it recedes back up into the very peaks of the, the highest areas of the map. So you still get areas where there's a little bit of snow happening here and there. Um, also, like I know this is a kind of this is the sort of thing that I, I would personally get very excited about, Benny, as you know. Um, yeah. But the, the, all the greens are a specific type of green. So spring, spring has like a, we actually went out with uh, colour scanners and scanned all the, the values of all the leaves from the trees at different seasons, and they're, they're much fresher and they don't sort of go to that sort of darker value of green, which again lifts everything up and makes yeah. everything feel slightly more fresh than uh, than summer where everything becomes much more uh, mature and also much much more lush than the environment right well ben thank you very much for talking to us as well i know you're going to be returning in a little bit but i think it is now time uh, to move on to more of what we've got loads more coming up on the stream as well including having a look at the soundtrack 
We've also got that epic grudge match with the brand new team adventure mode, along with having a deep dive into the audio of Forza Horizon 4 and the recording of the game's cover car, the McLaren Senna. We're also going to be taking a look at Edinburgh to explore the game's beautiful city. But right now, we've got some news on that soundtrack, which Ralph is going to talk us through, which I'm extremely excited about. So Ralph, take it away. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's right, and people have been on the chat uh, in all three of the streams that we've done already asking about soundtrack. It's obviously something that um, uh, people are really excited to hear about. Music is an incredibly important, important part of, uh, of Horizon yeah. games. Going right back to the first game, uh, music kind of sets the tone, it sets the atmosphere of the festival and of the driving experience. So I understand people are really excited to hear what's on the soundtrack. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna disappoint people by not revealing very much about the soundtrack, the, the music that's in it. That's that's still a couple of months away. That's something that runs right the way up uh, to the game ships. But what we can do today is talk a little bit more about um, some of the radio stations that will be appearing yep. uh, in the game, which is great. I think we've got a bit of a graphic that we can stick up uh, to show you the six radio stations within the game, and I can talk to uh, to each of them a little bit and tell you in particular who the DJs are going to be um, in these stations. So Horizon Block Party was uh, made its debut in Forza Horizon 3. It's kind of our party hip hop station. Um, with us being in the UK now, uh, we've changed the DJ for that station. Uh, and actually the DJ is someone that you might well have heard of. Uh, Mr. Jam is a Radio 1, Radio yeah. 1 Extra. Uh, DJ uh, and he has uh, been good enough to come and be the DJ for Block Party in Horizon 4 which is great and he's done a brilliant brilliant job of that. Um, from memory the other two uh, stations which have been in every Horizon game Block Party and Pulse are back. People love them for me they, they combine to create really the sound of of Horizon yeah. games. Uh, Scott Tyler is back as the, as the DJ for, Blo uh, for uh, Bass Arena. Um, I've forgotten her name, somebody help me out. Amy Simpson, thank you, is back as the DJ for, uh, for Pulse. Uh, and they, they are offering exactly the same kind of music that they did, have done previously, you know, dance music and bass yeah, arena yeah. and chilled electronica in Pulse. Um, what else we've got? Timeless uh, FM has come back as well, uh, including the Australian DJ Don Thompson has, uh, has emigrated from, uh, from Australia. Uh, to stay in touch with the, the Horizon Festival. Uh, and an old favorite that, that skipped a game actually, Horizon XS uh, is back. So that is our rock station this time. That's where you're gonna get your, uh, your big riffs. Uh, and we have a new DJ entirely, uh, a guy called Malk, uh, who is the DJ uh, for that station. And then the final one that uh, I wanted to mention, and it's particularly uh, appropriate because I think you can hear the music playing in the background, uh, is a record label that we've worked with for a couple of uh, games now. They're really good friends of ours. Hospital Records return uh, for yeah. Horizon 4. Uh, and I think they're even more involved with the game this time. Uh, the, the music you're hearing, and indeed the station which will be in the game, uh, is one that, which features completely new uh, music from that, uh, that label. So even if you're massively into your drum and bass or into, into hospital, this is music that you won't have heard before. Uh, and if you remember E3, that, that demo we yeah, showed, yeah. Uh, the soundtrack to that was uh, entirely soundtracked by Fred Bean Graphics, an artist on that label. They came into the studio, we worked with them uh, to, to, to soundtrack and craft that, uh, the musical experience of that demo. And that will be the, the opening 10 minutes uh, of the game. So it's also it's pretty exciting as well because it's one of the things that I've always loved about Forza Horizon games is the music and kind of just spending time just going along like the road like main roads and just yeah. kind of enjoying it. Um, so thank you very much for talking us through that. I'm really excited to kind of hear more and like listen to more as the soundtrack gets released as uh, like closer to indeed it will. the game. Yeah. So thank you very much. We've still got so much. Ralph will be joining us again uh, shortly later on the stream. But we've got so much more coming up. We we have Fraser going as well to talk us through the McLaren Senna cover car sound audio. It's going to be awesome as well. And we've got loads more, including that epic grudge match, all right, in the, uh, um, oh God, the, the name's the, uh, in the team adventure. And then also having a look at Edinburgh, which I'm really excited about as well as people. But Fraser, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. 450 cars in the game. What's it like working on the audio? It's, uh, it's a lot of work. Um, as you can imagine, every game we kind of try and record as many cars as we possibly can and we, we try and refresh the sounds that are in the game. Um, things that people can look forward to in this game, we've, we've been out recording, uh, I think some of the highlights, we had some a V12 Ferrari, so we, we've got that in the game. We've, uh, you've got Andy hooning about in the, the Dodge Viper ACR at the minute and that's got a really raspy actual um, V10 Dodge Viper engine on it, which sounds yeah. really cool. Um, 
We've also been out and we've, we've done completely end of the spectrum kind of 1920s vintage Bentleys, which are really kind of rumbly and um, kind of almost sound like they're falling apart, which is really cool. And every car has its own challenges, really. Um, but obviously what people are kind of excited to hear about is obviously the, the cover car of Horizon 4, yeah. which is the McLaren Senna. Um, for all of these cars, we kind of, um, we, you know, go to an airstrip and we attach loads of microphones and um, we kind of get the different perspectives of the car. Um, I think we've, we've also got some like footage of you actually going on these days and like collecting this audio, which is really exciting to see as well because it's it's fun kind of seeing that like kind of thing put together. So here we are, the McLaren Senna itself, and that, you said you said something special about that car as well. Yes, yeah, so this is actually the, the carbon fibre version of the Senna, which is um, a lot more expensive than than the standard one. Yeah, seven hundred and fifty cool. grand for the base version. <laughs> and then. I think this one's about a million actually. Um, yeah, McLaren were a great partner to work with on this. Uh, you can see they, they actually uh, provided us with a, a 720 and a, a 540 to go out on the, the airstrip in Dunsfold and get loads of pass-bys and record uh, the onboard sound of this stuff. Um, it was a really great day. We got loads of authentic source and that's one of the things that we really wanted to make sure in the game that yeah. we, we, we got a really authentic sound for all of these McLarens. Um, and I think we've kind of done it justice. A lot of people might assume with a, a V8 twin turbo that it, like, you know, have a loud blow off valve or something like that. But actually it's got a really nice, smooth, clean kind of just whistle to it, which is really cool. Yeah. And also, but you know, a McLaren Senna, 750 grand, a million, like depending on which one you go for. But you also worked on, you were telling us earlier about a car that you really, really loved. And um, I think we got some footage of you as well. Yeah, this was, this was a car that, um, it's a new to franchise engine. It's, it's never it's never been in, in the games. Um, the, the wheels of this thing were bigger than me. I mean, this this thing was a beast. I think I think we got some exclusive footage. All right. If you, oh, there, there we there go. go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fortunately, we, we managed to get um, access to this tractor, and I think this is the first vehicle I've ever recorded where we could actually strap a man to the side of it to record it. I would love to see you try and do that to someone with a McLaren Senna. I don't <laughs> think you would have them afterwards. I, I don't think so. Well, we did start off with a bigger team, and now we, we've it, completed. It's just kind of gone down <laughs> one by one. Yeah. Um, but it's also, so you've, got, you've had 450 cars to work with, but with this game also having four seasons, How's that? How have you worked in putting the audio together with across those four seasons? So it's it's been a massive job. I think it's fair to say that it has been four times the amount of work. Um, with a game like Horizon, we've we've obviously got the cars, we've got the music, and then a big part of the game is also the the open world. Yeah. Um, with it being the UK, I was really excited because we wanted to go out and we've got all this on our doorstep. So we wanted to visit every location in the UK and record in every single season. So, um, you know, we've been to the Cotswolds in all different seasons. We've been up to the Yorkshire Moors. Uh, we've done Edinburgh. I've been in Edinburgh Castle recording in the middle of winter, freezing cold. And it's not just um, seasons, it's, it's time of day. Um, so every, everywhere you go in the game, it sounds different depending on your location, season, time of day, um, and verticality, because it's one of the, the most vertical games that we've got. Yeah. So, there's, there's tons of stuff that changes. Like um, spring, it actually is, is my favorite season in the game because I think we go, from, we go from winter into spring and winter has sort of like migrating geese and uh, you know robins and crows and it's, it's kind of stark. And then you move into, into spring and you've got lambs coming out. You've got um, sort of cows and barns, cockerels coming out four o'clock in the morning until six, um, at six or 10 in the morning. So it, like the sound of the game really changes depending on season. Yeah, because I one of my favourite times was uh, in all, when we were looking at autumn, and now you were just going along. The sound of the leaves on the floor sounded amazing, and it kind of put you in that season. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, we we've had to work quite a lot on the the new driving experiences that are in Horizon Four. Um, obviously, we've got deep snow. We've got um, deep deformable mud now. Like I almost wrecked my car just <laughs> while we were travelling around the country. I would like pull over, there's a patch of mud and drive through it and get my car completely dirty and also the audio designer really dirty as I drove. <laughs> what, did he just sit there with a microphone? He stood there with a the microphone and it just splashed all over Just like mouth. covered in mud. So, all right, we got it. Great, move on. <laughs> yep. Um, it must be so much fun though, because I, from the small amount of time that I've had hands on the game, the audio sounds exceptional. So, thank you very much for spending time and talking us through it. Uh, like, can't wait to see more as well. 
Uh, but we have got so much more coming from the stream. Big thank you to Fraser as well for talking us through the audio. Love the tractor and the McLaren Senna. But we have so much more, including that epic grudge match, which I am so excited to see on Team Adventure. We're also going to be taking a look at Edinburgh. And remember, we're going to be taking questions from you guys as well. So if you've got any questions, get them in the chat so that at the end, Ben and Ralph can come through as well. And if you've got anything about Team Adventure as we're seeing stuff, because we're going to be joined by Matt and AJ as well to kind of be going through everything. Um, but kind of thank you very much for joining us, right? We are now here at the Epic Grudge match. Right, first of all though, tell us a little bit about Team Adventure. All right, so Team Adventure is kind of uh, a natural evolution of online adventure from Forza Horizon 3. So uh, two of the big differences are gonna be, well, firstly, it's team-based, as you can tell by the, the name. Uh, so it's gonna be a six versus six. Yep. Um, and the other thing is that it's restructured to really be a properly competitive game mode. So in uh, in Forza Horizon 3, you know, there were things like uh, skills and clean, which kind of affected how well uh, you were going to do. But this time around, it's just about how well you're doing in events, like, you know, how, what place you're coming in the race. Okay. And um, also, this, this epic grudge match, right? So you're, you're, you're representing the test team, right? Yep. How do you think you're going to do? Well, the test team play the game every day for the last nearly two years, and the designers just make it work. <laughs> they, just, they just design it, we're the ones who play it all the time, so we should know all of these, these courses inside out, we should know all the dirty tricks. So you should take this 3-0. and Oh, absolutely. Right, so, all right, <clears throat> so before we kind of get into the, kind of into the race itself, I think we need to kind of make a decision, right? Because your, your team is, right, your, your team dinosaur, no, I keep calling you team dinosaur, because <laughs> it's designosaurs. Yeah, we're team designosaurs, representing the design team. Right, and then yours is? Simply the test. Simply, simply the test. Simply better than all the rest. Better than all the rest, right? So you've even got a tagline. You've even got to the left of like, right, we've got a tagline, right, we're the best racers, we've got this. And, um, but however, right, Designer Source does have Andy racing for them, who has been like, kind of doing all the driving across these uh, live streams. So, uh, you know, he seems to choke at important moments. He seems to kind of like let the stress get to him. So that could be a factor. But what we're going to do right now as well is run a poll in the mixer chat, okay? Who do you think is going to win? Do you think it's going to be Team Test, all right? Or do you think it's going to be Team Designosaurs, right? Get in there, vote ahead, and we'll see who wins. Um, but shall we kind of start, start it up? Yeah, let's. So then we can kind of start talking through it. So then you can kind of explain to us everything we want to know about Team Adventure, because mm -hmm. it's something that I am really excited about seeing. So. Um, it's quite, it looks really fun. Yeah. Um, so we've jumped in here. Uh, we're looking at it from Andy's perspectives on Team Design I saw, and he's just picked his car. Um, I love how Andy's got like a, uh, a very upfront name, num name plate as well. It's just like, make yeah, sure exactly. you know. Just so you know. <laughs> this is Andy's car. This is Andy, right? by the way. Avoid. He's just, just sick of not being shown on the streams. People want to make sure people remember his name. You're just going to see like his face is on the little, uh, <laughs> like on the, on the license plate stuck around. <laughs> Like spot around. Um, so as we get into this game, so right. This year we get to see uh, all the designer stores. So you get to see your whole team. You see they've actually made a team in our game as well. And uh, they've like made a, they've got a team name obviously and also a logo that you got to see there. And we're right into the first race, which is uh, gonna be a cross country around Mortimer Gardens, which is kind of in the northwest part of the map. It's got some like Roman ruins. It's pretty interesting. Right, and just before we get into this, event number one, vote in the poll who you think is going to win the first event. Is it going to be Team Designosaurs or Team Test? Vote now as we get into it and we'll see who wins. I'm going, personally going for Team Test because, you know, apparently have the best drivers <laughs> and also Andy's not on the team as well, which is important. Okay, here we go. Right, so talk us through. All right, so the first event is going to be a team race. So some of you that have played Force Tries and 3 might be familiar with this. So basically how it works is um, every single opposing player that you finish ahead of, you score 100 points for your team. And also the person who comes first gets a bonus uh, 50 points. So you can yep. see all those points tallying up on the, on the right there. Uh, and also, it's, it's all totaled up right at the top. Um, and the team with the most points at the end wins. You see, Designer Souls obviously with a lead going well, at the start. You know, it's going against what the poll's saying. Team Test is, is the one that feels like people, the audience feels is going to be the winner. So we're gonna, it's going to be interesting. Backed by the will of the people. Well, <laughs> yeah, you play the game the most, but, but everyone as designers are always the best. How, how are you going to motivate your team? Um, if they don't win, they're coming in at the weekend. That's, that's just kind of a cool way to do it. It's like, <laughs> all right, 
guys, you need to put even more practice into the racing so they better win uh, or even more time at the weekend in. So, as well as the score, what other things should people be looking out for uh, during the team adventure mode? I think one of the one of the important things, uh, as well as the score, is the way that the um, the scoring is designed means that even if you're stuck in last place, all you really need to do is make sure you try and get ahead of at least one person on the other team. Yeah. So uh, you know, there's, there's no matter what position you're in, you don't need to try and win to be a contributing factor. Yeah, because that's something that a lot I think a lot of people find. If they're like dead last, they have a terrible start to a race, they're dead last, they're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to win this race now. So kind of just slow down and ease up and do that. But they're here, every single place matters. So if you're in 12th position, if you take one, it could be the difference. Yeah, exactly. Overtake, doing an overtake from 12th to 11th matters just as much as 3rd to 2nd. So every single player is kind of equally important. Have you seen like any tactics people have started doing already in like kind of play sessions as uh, Andy's just crashing into people already? <laughs> I think someone crashed to a shed there, so I'll, I'll, I'll give Andy <laughs> a pass on that. Andy, uh, but, uh, um, I think the main thing is that because it's a team race, it's really important you don't interfere with your own team. Yeah. Like you're not just out for yourself. If you accidentally shove one of your teammates into a tree or outside of a checkpoint, that's going to be really damaging for your team. So you need to be really careful with that. But absolutely do interfere with the other team. Knock them off yeah. the road. <laughs> Like, I, I, th I think I'd be a danger in this game because like, I just crash into people and like, it doesn't matter if they're on my team or the other team, it's just I'll just be like, all right, fastest way forward. <laughs> uh, I'd, not, I'd not be someone you'd want on your team, to be honest. All right, so we're, we're coming up to the end of this lap right now and uh, you, the, you, at the top as well, you can clearly see who's winning. Yeah, so there's a 150 point lead for design, obviously. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, obviously, so, like, right inside, like, just going like, oh no, design is like, what's going on? Okay, so end of the race, you've got team team, team test, right? It's got 1,750 points and team designer scores 1,900, which means the poll was wrong, all right? They went for team test, you sold them out, and now they've kind of ended up losing the race. Team Dinosaurs takes the first map, but what happens now? And as what, what's the next step in the uh, team adventure? So an important thing to know about team adventure is it works as a best of five. So that means it's the first of three points. Yep. And so we'll get to see here. The current score is 1-0 uh, to design. Um, and now we're going to go into the second event, um, which is going to be a free roam rush, uh, which is going to be a, quite a different kind of team race. Once we get into it, we'll kind of explain how the difference right. is. So what we'll is. do is we get into that. You've seen everyone play in the first race. Vote now in the poll for the second race, which is that free roam rush. Okay, who do you think is going to win? Team test or designer swords? Vote now uh, and just kind of explain what what we're what we're playing for. All right, so uh, free roam rush um, is kind of uh, an evolution of the drive to event phase that was in Forza Horizon 3, but then it it kind of didn't really contribute that much to the overall adventure. But this time, it's a proper event that counts just as much as every other event in okay. the adventure. And the key difference is, it's a team race, but it's a team race with no checkpoints. So you can take any route you like to get to the end. Um, so there's a lot of strategy in like what route you're going to take and whether you're going to stick to the roads or beeline it across the cross country. Yeah, absolutely. World knowledge is, is a key factor for these parts because there's, there's no checkpoints that you have to hit through. You just have to do the first to the end of the road. But you've got to know, is now a safe time to cut across country or should I be sticking to the roads here? I think it's also going to be really exciting with seasons because seasons are going to change how you approach the, each each of these races. Absolutely. So you know, in in winter, obviously that big lake freezes, and that's a that's a massive shortcut that opens up. Whereas, uh, in fact, I think in this one they have to navigate around around the big lake because it's not the quickest way to go. Well, yeah, you know, I, I don't know how about you, but I, I think just kind of driving your car into a big pool of water isn't going to go too well. It's not renowned for being speedy. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's going on now? So this is the first time they're kind of going across country. So you can see the there, there was, um, the road was actually really slow in that case. So everyone just cut straight across the landscape and uh, taking that shortcut to get ahead, which can lead to some interesting jumps, but uh, it's all in good fun. And we also saw those uh, destructible trees just kind of like bouncing around, just like flying across yeah. the sky. Um, who is winning right here? It's, it's, it's actually designed like, Design Souls are, are winning this one, aren't they? No, this Team Test is winning. So yes, yeah, so the blue team, oh, Team no, Test, is actually it, yeah. just by 50 points. So it's you were behind, close. though. Like, you were, like, you, you're kind of pulling it ahead. And that, that Team Test is actually starting to, to rack up as you it. just get crashed into. Yeah, that was a dinosaurs, Designosaurus taking their, uh, their own teammates out there, literally not listening to what Matt said to avoid doing <laughs> <laughs> After this, I'm going upstairs. <laughs> right. That was close. And Andy just kind of had that decision, does he go right and then just kind of follow the uh, designer saw 
straight across the side. Yeah, he's managed to gain a bit of time there by taking that shortcut. Which is not what we want, really, because I am team test. <laughs> All right, so it's so working we're, out. We're still in the lead. So, uh, okay. I find as a spectator, I'm just also getting, just, as well as like looking at the wall, I just keep getting drawn to that like top, that top right corner where you can kind of see each team's score, which is just constantly going up and down like yeah. a ping pong. Yeah, like through and rush is so variable. Like it's so easy to just make one mistake, crash into a tree, accidentally end up in the middle of a lake. Yeah. Easier said, happens more than you think. And uh, <laughs> you can lose so many positions. Um, or sometimes that uh, that shortcut that you take that leaves you in 12th for ages, all of a sudden you're just cut out ahead of the pack. Can you use rewind in the free run match, or is it kind yeah. of like a... Yes, you can. We've actually made kind of a new version of rewind that works in online races that just immediately pushes you backwards and no one else. So that's if you hit a tree, you can actually recover from it a bit easier now. That's awesome. OK, here we go. And we're now coming up to the uh, third race. It is... Which team has won this? Team Test has won the rush, which means it's 1-1, one, one, right? It's yeah. what we want, OK? It's by, kind of yeah. tension going. By a significant margin compared to that. <laughs> that it, it was a charity win. We don't want it to be over 3 0. People want to see more. We lulled you into a false sense of security. False sense of security, come yeah, back. Yeah, you, yeah, did right. say, you did sell everyone and so say you had the best drivers. Yep. Uh, but we're now coming up into survival, which is a brand new mode for Forza Horizon 4. Yeah, exactly. Um, so once again, Team Test, right, was voted to win the last race. So the audience was right. The audience has got one right, one wrong so far. So this race, survival race coming up, uh, once again, there will be a poll in the chat. Who do you think is going to win to take the 2-1 lead? Get involved. Um, but what is survival? All right, so uh, this is an Anything Goes Team Adventure, which means it's a mixture of racing and playground games. And we're playing a brand new playground game here that uh, you've never seen before, um, which is called Survival. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, what survival is, is it puts uh, one team becomes a zombie team and another team becomes the team of survivors. So you can see the zombie team are the green players and the surviving team are the purple players on the leaderboard. The goal of zombie teams is to hit all the survivors and infect them all at the same time okay. as quickly as they possibly can. Which is going to create a lot of carnage as well. So you've got a time limit on the bottom right hand corner which is four minutes per round? Exactly, yeah. So they've got four minutes to try and do it. It's, not very often that a team manages to last four minutes, but, you know, maybe Design will manage to do that. Um, yeah. You sound optimistic. You're like, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe we'll yeah, do exactly, it. Yeah, exactly, So you can see on the leaderboard now, a couple of uh, the survivors have gone orange, which means they're become infected. But the twist is they can actually get healed by crushing into their allies. Is that what we just saw on screen there, where uh, Andy, like, hit into his car? Absolutely yeah. right. Right, so what, what else have we got going on at the moment? So you can see on the right who's infected, who's alive. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I think that's, that's one of the key things. You've just seen now that there, we've dropped from the design team having three infected people to having no infected people. And that's, that's one of the big sort of changes in, in this mode from, from the solo version of infected in that the game can change from being nearly, nearly lost to you being back in full form going for that yeah. sort of four minute, four minute timeout. Yeah. Um, so you can have like a huge swing of events. Like you could yeah. kind of have this moment. I, th I think that's going to be a really exciting thing as a player as well, which kind of makes me want to hop on and play it, is that you know that you could be like the last person alive and you could just do like this epic comeback and like bring your friends back in. It's like, you, uh, can you remember like stuck in the mud at prim like primary yeah, school? Yeah, it's a lot <laughs> like that. that yeah. uh, it's kind of like what you need is the, uh, the, the, mud, the mud as well. Yeah, so I mean, that's uh, another good example. We were down to just one survivor on the design team and uh, the testers let him go away. You're dropping Yeah, and they all, uh, all healed each other back up. This, this mode really is not over until it's over, which just makes it super exciting. Uh, and a team is just never, never out of the running. But one, of the, uh, one of the fun things about this as well is that on, if you're starting on the zombie team, you're not there trying to build up that sort of pack of people as you were in, in Solo Infected. Yeah. Where the beginning of it could sometimes feel a little bit slow. This time you're starting with this this huge group of zombies just absolutely chasing after the whole team all at once. And it, it just feels a lot more fun straight from the get-go. You're right at the really intense part of the action. So we, we're just coming down to Mike is the last survivor to kind of tag in. There's one minute 30 left. Can he do something Can special? He heal any of his allies? Oh, he's, he's, he's getting chased by 200 viewers. It's like everyone's just clashing into each other. Is he going to be able to do it? No. Uh, no. Right, so you know what? That was a decent time, though. Two minutes 30? Yeah, I think they survived for about 2.30, so... Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, one of the super cool things is when there's only one person left, every single player is gunning for that player, so they want to get healed or get them. <laughs> you just have super a massive exciting. panic attack. You look in your wing mirror and just like see like 11 cars yeah. just chasing you down the motorway. <laughs> just be like, all right, move, 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 move. 
Um, so we've got our next round now, right, so, which is... Um, so now we swap over. So the team of the zombies before, and now the survivors and vice versa. So now we're going to watch from uh, Andy's perspective, suspect, uh, perspective who is now uh, a zombie. And one of the biggest changes is the mini-map, isn't, isn't it? Yeah, so when you swap teams, one of the things that uh, makes a big difference uh, is the mini-map. So when you're on the zombie team, um, you can see all of the other players, whereas when you're on the survivor team, you can only see members of the survivors, so you can only see the purple players and the orange players, so you can get that, it gets a little bit nervy sometimes. Yeah, so what we're going to do as well is just, we, we, we're going to bring some gameplay back up in a second, but the biggest thing with Team Adventure is it's just kind of, it is that competitive mode where you can hop on and it's how you fill in the team. What kind of advice would you give people hopping in for the first time? So I'd say one of the key things is car choice is uh, really important. Um, you get, well, we didn't get to see it, but you actually get the chance to see all the events that are coming up in the adventure at the start. Uh, and so you need to really carefully think about what events you're gonna do. Like, is there any cross country races? Maybe I should pick a trophy truck. Is there any street or asphalt yeah. races? I should think about them. Um, and if you know the map really well, you might be able to figure out where the rushes go and plan accordingly. Yeah, and you can also then, as well, you want to take into account the seasons too. So, yes, it's, you know, a lot of cross-country events, yeah. but, you know, you want to make sure you've got the, the one that you've kind of tuned or tweaked to be really good on the snow and the ice. Or if you know that <clears throat> there's a really quick and easy shortcut that you'll, you'll make most advantage of in the free run rush, maybe you sacrifice some speed in a street race for extra speed in the, uh, in the free run rushes. It's like planning yeah. ahead for the whole thing, because you can't change your car during the team adventure, can Absolutely, you? yeah. So it's kind of you're going to get a different combination of cars depending on what you're going to be in the situation. Uh, also, just a quick reminder for everyone watching at home, we are doing a cosmetic giveaway. We will be kind of getting back into the gameplay just in a second. But if you're watching over on Mixer, you have a chance of winning an in-game cosmetic. So get involved in the chat, ask some questions, let us know what you think. And we're going to get into that next second round of the zombie survival. So uh, you need to catch up. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so yeah, we're, we managed to get back into it. So, um, so yeah, so the design team is now playing the zombies, we're watching from Andy's perspective. They just need to get them as fast as possible. The time limit is set to the amount of time that the first mm -hmm. team took, that's 2 and 30. And uh, so they just, if um, the zombie team manages to get them all before the time is out, then the design is the team's going to win. Yeah, so the, at this point, the test team doesn't have to survive yeah. the full four minutes. We just have to survive longer than it took for us to hunt down all of the designers, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm sure they will. You, you, you've got a good chance as well, and we, we, we did mention the minimap earlier, but can we kind of talk that through now that we can see it properly yeah. on the top left? Yeah, sure. So as I was, as I was saying, as a, as a zombie, as you can see from, from Andy's point of view, he can see all of the other players on the minimap. He can see his teammates in green, the other zombies, and he can see all the, uh, the survivors in, in purple and orange. Yep. Whereas if you're, when he was on the, uh, the survivors team, he could only see his survival teammates, which you uh, sort of... It adds this layer of tension because you can't see where the zombies are. You just see your teammates flicking from purple to orange as they uh, as they get picked off. I think communication is going to be a big one as well because I keep seeing yes. everyone using the commands as well just to kind of help each other out and kind of, kind of keep that movement away. Or sometimes say boop. Boop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you, whatever you want to yeah, say. Exactly. It's just like, did Spooky take someone out? Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he is in the, uh, the uh, designer saws. So it's, it's getting close. There's a minute left. You've got down, Tess is down to two people at the moment. Um, so but it's entirely possible we can uh, hopefully turn it all around and start healing up some of uh, the infected members of the team, otherwise this is going to be a, a It's scary though, how do you approach this as if you get infected? Are you just going like, kind to of sit and wait for your team to come get you? Are you going to chase your team? It's going to be interesting to see how people kind of take, take to it. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's absolutely where the communication really comes in. Like, around the studio, we've been shouting to like, slow down, speed up, like, and behind you, I need you to heal me. Like, we're always shouting each other around the office and um, playing because it just benefits so much from that kind of communication. And, and, and he's and just going to take two people out. Yeah. Like, straight away, just one, two, tap. And you've got Owen is the last person standing. He has to survive for 18 seconds. All right, Come 15 on. seconds. All right, and... <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, if I was Owen, I'd be very disappointed. I'd march upstairs right now and say, you're not having your weekend. Where was the communication? I backed you guys. Designer Saws are winning. Um, 222 is Aiken. All right, so we finished the third round now. We've got the fourth race coming up, mm -hmm. OK? Team Test has got to win We've this. Got to win this to stay in it. And so what, what kind of race have we got for the fourth race? 
So this is a, this is another free run rush um, yep. event. So between each of the the sort of circuit or point to point sort of traditional events, you'll always have a have a free run rush, which is the race to get to the start line, basically. Okay. So uh, for those of you who are watching, you can vote in the mixer poll right now. Who do you think is going to win? It is currently two one to the designer saws. Um, and that makes it 2-1 as well to the, the non-chat, because the chat had been back in test <laughs> every single time, right? And the dinosaurs are pulling it off, okay? You oversold team test, right? But you know what, they, they smashed the last kind of, they, they smashed this last time, so they could do it this time, okay? I'm not feeling confident now, I feel like I bat the wrong horse. <laughs> yeah, team design didn't win the last run much, but I think that was just a fluke, I think. Uh, <laughs> um, so one of the big things this. as well, when we saw just at the start of the race there, what determines the lineup? So uh, the kind of the lineup is just based on the uh, the endpoint of the previous event, and it kind of interlaces the team just to keep it fair, so like blue red, blue red, yeah, okay. and uh, everyone gets set off facing towards the, dire uh, the direction that they need to head. This is this is also kind of this is where when you, if you're playing at home you're going to start getting stressed out. Oh my god! <laughs> but yeah, that that was just like how has Andy actually pulled that off and not just crashed into a tree? That was definitely a tree that would stop your car. <laughs> Um, also, we've got some different uh, questions. We've got some questions coming in from the audience right now. Um, Matt Ignat says, how many different types of adventures are there? So there's three kinds. So there's racing, if you just want to do racing. There's games, yep. if you just want to do games. But what we're doing is anything goes, where it's a mixture of the two. So you can kind of get different styles. Yes. And there's also sort of ranked versus unranked. Yeah, actually, well. um, there's another, like, another th essentially three modes, which are kind of the same, but ranked modes. So that's always 12 people. Um, you get uh, skill-based matchmaking, you've got skill-based leagues for those and uh, special rewards for people that manage to climb up the league. So I'm really excited people get stuck in with that. I'm, I'm quite excited for that. A any time I hear, hear anything like competitive and ranked, I'm just like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I'm involved, especially in something like this, because I think this is, is so different and so exciting because it is that kind of best of five kind of round, so you can have those big moments and those comebacks, which are really exciting when you're playing with a group of your friends as well. Um, it is close right now. Uh, we're actually I'm saying it's close. The dinosaurs are pulling away from it. <laughs> up until about five seconds ago, Tester in the lead. Like, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. All right, it's close. Oh, wait, it's just swung the whole way the other way. It's now gone test. It's like kind of left and right. It's like who comes up with the best shortcut? Yeah, that's the thing with Freedom Rush is, is the different shortcuts can pay, can pay off or sabotage you at different moments. So it's, it's really hard to tell uh, who is winning until right near the end. But it seems like. Designer stores have got a nice lead, so doing pretty good. You're doing quite well. It's because Murtag has just kind of got that locked up right now. It's, it's the middle of the park. It shows how important it is. It's not just who's winning, because like you've got Chappie and Tanya getting a, a thousand points for you combined, and then Murtag has got 650, and it's just that kind of midsection where you've got all the players at the bottom of the team test. Yeah, absolutely. So this is what we were saying. Like it's really important just for one or two of the. Uh, the, the back-ended test team to, to overtake and gain that extra 100 points just by taking over one extra person. If I was telling you, I'd be knocking Murtag off the road right there. <laughs> I'd be like, kind of getting a little swipe. Is this, this, this is close, 75% of the way, and yeah. this is, do we go to a map five, or do we stay on, is it, is it a 3-1 finish? Right, let us know in the chat quickly. It's not, we don't have time for a poll, but who do you think? Uh, no, you just don't hit a tree. <laughs> what, what do you mean, don't hit a tree? Well, you're, you're back in the dinosaurs. Yeah, well, I'm exactly. just like, hit a tree, hit a tree. He just nearly went. Oh, I think oh, that went for a few seconds longer. That would have been over. But that is a 3 1 finish. All right, to be fair, Team Test smashed the first one, and then in this free roam rush, um, you got actually beaten worse than yeah. the other one. Yeah. yeah you you can't be the people that design the game, I'm just saying. <laughs> but it's, it's unlucky, but that, that is team adventure. Um, it's something that people are going to get their hands with on from day one. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. That's, I'm super excited for everyone to play it. I think that you guys are really going to like it. I know you guys have been asking for a mode just like this, and I really hope that we've delivered on what you guys want. I, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us as well and showing it for the first time. Um, cannot wait to get my hands on it and try it, try it myself. Survival especially. I think I'm just going to be hooked. Uh, but guys, we've got so much more coming up on the stream. Big thank you for uh, joining us and talking us through uh, Team Adventure. Uh, but we're now going to be rejoined by Ben and Ralph as well to have a look at the wonderful, wonderful Edinburgh, which is going to be pretty, pretty exciting to see because it's the first city that we're going to be seeing in Britain. Um, so, Ralph, Ben, thank you for coming back as well. Hi. Uh, who, who did you have back? <laughs> I, like I said earlier, the, the, the dinosaurs. 
Um, who, who I believe won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah, yeah they right? did. You know, they like did. we're just it's pretty exciting let's, stuff, isn't it? Let's just move sweetly on, right? We, we we were wrong. Andy's just come back with a big grin on his face as well. It's like yes, yes, we won. <laughs> um, but Edinburgh. So we, uh, how are we going to get to Edinburgh? We're going to drive, uh, Benny. We're going to. We're gonna <laughs> really? Drive. We're not going to fly. We're going to drive right the way to Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we thought we'd save this for last, uh, just out of badness, I think, actually, because people have been really excited about seeing it through these streams. Um, and it is really cool. It, it's, a, it's a super cool city. I think it's the best city we've done uh, in a Horizon game. Um, this isn't it, actually. This is, I don't think we've shown this in the streams before. Yes. That's Banbrick Castle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we're at the coast, actually, again, which I don't think we've, we've actually seen, but there, there you go. That's, so that's Banbrick Castle. There's a big old British beach over there to the, to the right. It's actually another gameplay arena. It is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is. Um, and if we drive up, this is sort of the, the east coast of the, of the world that we've built. Uh, eventually, we will get to Edinburgh. Um, and it's probably worth mentioning just you know, like why we have cities in, uh, in Horizon. Um, we didn't have any cities. We had, we had a, a biggish town in one, but yeah. it really. Main from, town. Main, main, main town, town was what yeah. it was called, yeah. Um, only town. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the, the main town. Yeah. Um, but from two, we had we had Nice in the south, south of France. Obviously, in Horizon Three, we had Surface Paradise, um, and I, I think it's a really important component to uh, to a Horizon world now. I know a lot of people really love the experience of, of driving yeah. uh, in a city. Um, it gives you quite a different style of gameplay mm -hmm. um, from you know what Horizon is predominantly about the thrill of the open road. That's what we always kind of uh, set out to, to to achieve. But certainly, there's a really cool. Uh, gameplay uh, when you're you're driving around a city, particularly a city you you, you recognise, um, and you know Edinburgh certainly for us ticks those boxes, um, and it's really cool to have it in the game. I think I think also while we're driving up, because I know that it's been one of the biggest questions as well, is why not London? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm a Londoner, so I'm like, why not London? Um, so London's a great city. Every, yeah. Everyone knows what a great uh, city uh, London is. It's also absolutely massive. Um, and it's also like incredibly, how to put it, like unique. Mm -hmm. right? You know, when you get anywhere near central London, every building is completely different and every building is completely iconic. Um, and really, um, the amount that would be, the amount of work, I guess, that would be involved in recreating London would mean you probably didn't have any time left over to yeah. go build the rest of the game. I think, you know, um, you know, you would, you would probably have to devote an entire game to London to do it justice. And, and also in so doing, you would probably fundamentally change. And there's Edinburgh. And you just lost um, <laughs> That's a pretty, cool Edinburgh. pretty cool way to reveal uh, Edinburgh. Um, um, yeah, and in, and in doing so, you would really change what, what the game's about. You know, if, if your game was all uh, you know, street racing and, and cities, then suddenly you're making a game like Midnight Club. Yeah which are brilliant games, but not the game that we have ever set out to make or, or, or really necessarily want to make. Like I say, Horizon is about the thrill of the open road, it's about driving on the best driving roads in the world. And the fact that we can incorporate a city like Edinburgh, which is obviously smaller than London, but, but I think no less iconic, no less beautiful, um, it fits our game really well. And talking about like, iconic locations, where was that that we just jumped from? It's it's iconic for you. It, 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 I mean, it's so that that was our Arthur seat, which yeah. is a kind of a big rocky, rocky hill outside uh, outside Edinburgh, um, which is quite famous if you if you are living Edinburgh and, and affords great views of Edinburgh. It does, as you just saw, yeah. Um, but it's, it's I think the other stuff that's worth talking about when it comes to Edinburgh is how cool the road network is in this mm. in this particular urban environment in this game. So. So before, with, uh, with Surface Paradise, it was quite a modern, high-rise yeah. city, and it had that very grid-like uh, road network, which afforded a certain type of experience. I think what's great about Edinburgh is the, the roads have obviously built up over time. There's a lot of history associated with this location, and it, it creates these really interesting pieces of road network that the, the level designers have been able to leverage and create some really unique races that I, I don't think we would have been able to create in an urban environment if we were in another sort of more modern Yeah. Like, what other major like locations are there which you would say in? So in let's Denver? point out. Um, so that's the Scott Mo Monument. So we're on Princess Street, which is the main um, thoroughfare. 
uh, in Edinburgh. <laughs> The street, it's the, yeah, it's yeah. the main street in, in Edinburgh, and obviously um, it has many famous buildings on it, not least of which is obviously the castle, which uh, is just over there. Andy's dri driving away from it now, which is uh, um, useful. But <laughs> He's taking the scenic route. He is. Yeah. Taking yes. the like, nice loop. While, while we're doing this um, route, we've actually also got a question from the chat as well, from Timberwolf. Is it true there are businesses you can use to make money, or is it just another fake rumour? Especially as we're going up to Edinburgh Castle, which costs a lot of money. It does buy. cost a lot of money, and actually we revealed the answer to that question just uh, a couple of m minutes ago, I think, when we drove past. Uh, one of the Horizon stories which involves a, a player business, so that is not uh, uh, a fake rumour. You can... It's not fake as, news. As, it's not fake news. Um, <laughs> It's, um, it's real it's news. Part of, uh, as part of some of the Horizon stories, um, to, to, you know, to get into and play those stories, yeah. you have to go by, by a business. And the one that we just passed um, is called uh, World's Fastest Rentals, which involves you buying, um, uh, I believe, a supercar sh rental business. Mm -hmm. Is that the, that's, yeah. Um, which is obviously, um, to allow you to go drive supercars um, for fun, which is kind of the point of uh, Horizon Games. And once you've bought that business, uh, and as you progress that Horizon story, um, yeah, you will you will earn money from that business, and you will, you will see that you know come into your account every time you log on. Okay, and then hopefully earn enough money to buy Edinburgh Castle in the in the long run for it as well. Um, Dirk, Dirk Michaels also asked, does surface water impact driving like ice in winter? It does, yes, as as it has done in Horizon Games since uh, since we introduced it in Horizon Two. Yes, so absolutely, um, the the physics uh, of a of a wet road is something that that we model and something that we uh, we replicate in the game. And you will feel, um, as Andy is probably now, um, that uh, you need to drive a slightly different way uh, when when the roads are wet. So um, also one of the biggest uh, changes in Horizon is day and night cycle. Mm. Like, so we, I think we're gonna head over to a race so we can kind of see Edinburgh at night. Yeah, so we can do a street race, um, which Andy's gonna drive up to in a couple of seconds. And our street race thread in the game, they're all night races that um, it's appropriate time of day to be doing some street races, right? Um, and Edinburgh in particular looks really, really stunning at night. There's, um, there's a lot of work that we've done under the hood to, to um, really um, put a lot of new features into our night lighting model that we've yep. never had before. Uh, so we're really, really proud of it, so which, is, uh, which is why we're going to be showing off in a couple of seconds. So I think um, Andy's just come around this corner here where the event start is, um, which is down here. Here we go. So yeah, so we actually we did show you a little bit of night in last it was it yeah last week's stream. Yeah. Um, but obviously Andy failing to hit a bonus board time and time <laughs> again was probably not the best. I think, they, I think they mentioned that in the chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was. That it's, was your, it's your time to redeem yourself. <laughs> it's redemption. Um, so yeah, so I saw. I, I thought it was um, only fair to show everybody um, what night looks like when when that's not happening, and also in Edinburgh where we've got lots of really cool things going on. So as I said on the previous stream, we've got. Um, true shadow casting light style from, from the car and the environment, which is a feature for the mm -hmm. Xbox One X. Uh, we've also got um, all of that stuff rendering it into the car bodies and reflecting off all the materials in, in better ways than we've ever been able to before. So you'll see all those pings coming off the metalwork. Uh, we've also got these really cool flares, which are a nice sort of, um, they're obviously our checkpoints for the race, but they also demo uh, some of the cool lighting features that are going on off of those as well. And as you can see, Edinburgh itself is just a super cool place at night. So all the shop lights have, have turned on, all the street lights, all of the up lighting on all the sort of major monuments, which is a real feature of Edinburgh. Mm. So one of, the th one of the things you'll always see if you Google um, Edinburgh on like, you know, sort of Google search is all the cool uplit castles and monuments and things. So that's, that's something that our lighting artists have been able to have real fun with uh, this time around. It makes you really want to go and visit Edinburgh. Mm. I'm just kind of like yeah. noticing that because it's a city I've never been to and it just looks absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it is a beautiful place. You should totally go. I, I will. It'll be next on my trip. <laughs> uh, we've also got another question from the from the chat uh, where Beardia Bread asks, what's the most common weather? Oh, most com uh, I, to be fair, I think we, we so we've really tried really hard to to curate a nice balanced experience for everybody. Mm. So, so we've, we've tried to make sure you get a bit of everything. Um, you get, you know, you get overcast skies, as you know, some people would assume would be the majority of the weather in, uh, in Britain. But as we've sort of proved over the course of these streams, you know, you also get some really gloriously sunny days as well. Amazing we, sunsets. We, there was a, there was a, a, 
quote by uh, the famous painter Turner, who said that Britain <laughs> had uh, four skies in one sky. You're but, bringing out yeah, a famous yeah, painter yeah, yeah, quote. There you go. That's what I do. Everybody loves me for it in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially Ralph. <laughs> This is the first one I've heard. Why have we not heard these yeah. quotes earlier? Because I've been told not to do it. Oh, <laughs> I'm joking. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. Um, it's one of those things, though. It's, it's, I'm quite excited to see the change with the change of weather as well. It's just kind of like when we went into that cockpit view, like that kind of different reflection of the lights. Mm. Mm. Um, but that, that is the end of that race right there. And we've, we're, we're coming out. If you guys have got any questions as well, just before we kind of like wrap up the stream because it's kind of sad this is this is the end of four weeks it's like it's like it's gonna like start like tearing up and kind of that moment because every single week we've had a chance to take a look at a different season different cars different parts of the world um and it, it's been it's been incredible but is there any is there any moment that's kind of really stood out for you <laughs> um many many moments <laughs> all, was, all uh, the uh, bugs that we've revealed to yeah, you yeah of course absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. as ben and i sit here <laughs> It's like, why has that happened? Um, uh, no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's honestly, it's not been something we have ever done before. Um, so um, we've been learning as we go. Apologies for that, but um, it's been a ton of fun. It's been great to feel uh, to, to hear the feedback uh, from fans and from viewers uh, on the game. Um, it's been exciting to show uh, what we've been working on for the last yeah, couple yeah. of years. You know, because. Uh, uh, generally speaking, we you know we don't do anything between mm. between E3 and Gamescom, and, and this year we, we have. Um, so it's been a great experience. Um, thank you to everyone for watching. Um, I think from it, from everyone at Playground, um, it's been great to get the the feedback. Um, and uh, and yeah, yeah, it's been it's been good. Yeah, and importantly, when's and when are we next going to hear more and see more about Fort Horizon? Right. Before? So yeah, so it's only a couple of weeks to Gamescom. Man, it, it really it, it it comes up on you, doesn't it? Um, it sneaks up, doesn't it's like... it? Um, so yeah, you, we will be at Gamescom. Uh, we will be there with the game. We will be with uh, they are showing more stuff, talking about more stuff. Yeah. Um, and then after Gamescom. Uh, Really, you're on the freight train towards towards launch, you know. So there'll be, I'm sure there will be a ton of things happening post Gamescom in the run up um, to uh, to launch, which is um, October the second, uh, October the second on Xbox One and Windows 10, uh, and also obviously on uh, Xbox Game Pass on that exact same day. And if you're an Ultimate Edition uh, owner, you will be able to play in early access. On the twenty eighth of September, I think. So it's it's not that far away now, it really. really. Isn't. It really it's just like, yeah, like Ben's has got his face going, yeah, yeah, <laughs> not, not not far at all. Um, but I, I think I'd just like to say on like behalf of the chat as well, thank you so much for showing so much of the game, so many things to look forward to. It's been an awesome few weeks and there's been so much to kind of like take in and kind of go back and watch and just kind of look forward to kind of getting hands on with the game because from what I've seen and what I've played, it, it is absolutely stunning. So thank you so much as Thanks. well from you and the whole team for over the past four weeks. It's been so much fun. I hope you guys at home have also enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to let us know what you think. And also remember, there is a chance to uh, win that in-game cosmetic item. And yeah, thank you so much for everyone here from Playground Games. And that is Forza Horizon 4. And that is the end of looking at the, all the seasons. So we will see you soon. Bye. What's up guys and welcome to the Forza Horizon 4 live stream from Playground Games. I am joined by Ralph. It felt like now is the time that we should uh, we should start showing them more uh, of this enormous game. Ben, I know you love the trees. Oh, I do. We spent a lot of time completely overhauling all of the rendering work that we put into our foliage. So. Um, all of our foliage shaders now do some really cool things, like they model the transmission of light through leaves, they model the specular across individual leaves. Obviously the seasons will change the driving experience, and you know, at its most extreme uh, in winter, you're gonna have ice, you're gonna have snow. That's gonna change up uh, the way you tackle corners, the kind of cars you take into races. Player houses, what are they? There are 12 houses. Um, there's like a huge variety. So when you start the game, um, we kind of give you one after the first hour or so. Um, and then from there, you're free to go explore, discover them. Some of them are really well hidden. So my favorite is just deep in the woods. It's this Huntsman's Lodge. Yeah. So if you kind of fancy yourself as a, as like, like a woodsman. Is drone mode still a thing? 
Drone mode is still a thing, yeah. yeah. Probably worth mentioning that this whole stream um, has been done in Horizon Solo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we obviously we talked about how the game is a shared world game. It would be mostly online, I guess, is probably a good way of uh, describing it. The objective we've come up with here, okay, is it's the first one to get it into the sheep into the horse in the quickest time. Right, there we go. I feel like maybe they're, they're, they're right, running away from you. Canny, these sheep. <laughs> you've, you've completely <laughs> lost them. They've just disappeared. Yeah. Actually, one other thing that's worth calling out there is we, we now have this viewer standard on all of our cars. This is brand new. So oh, this is awesome. Yeah, so this is something that mm. um, we did for the E3 demo last time. Uh, so it uh, looked really great if you're using a wheel setter uh, at home. Um, so now everybody's, uh, everybody's got that option. But it is on, it is on all cars now, I yeah. think I am right. So. That is correct, yeah. yeah. We're in the Highlands. We're in the, yeah, the yeah. north of the map, which we haven't really shown anyone uh, yet. Uh, in an area of the world that's kind of bits of beautiful Scotland, right? We're going to show by popular demand uh, the world map, so that's where we are, sort of northeast of the world. I know a lot of people were asking about uh, the Goliath and whether it was going to return. Um, if you if you notice there, uh, it has. We've started up at the top of the mountain, um, as we saw, and we're coming down into this beautiful valley. Big slow mo jump there. Being the size of what it is and, and how hovercrafts move around, they do drift mm. a lot, um, which is going to prove a bit of a challenge for a player. What can you do in this shared world? Some of our team upstairs are helping us out demo this today. Uh, when the game launches uh, it, on October 2nd, you'll be able to join with up to 72 people on a server. You can still absolutely race against your avatars in races, but when you're in the open world, um, there's an emergent fun and a character that real people can bring that um, you, just, you just can't create with an AI. Also goes is this really awesome way of just making our online world feel kind of super welcoming for yeah. everybody. Because one of the things that is not nice when you go online is people crashing into you, is kind of people griefing you if you're trying to be still or take a photo or something like that. So what Auto Ghost does is it says if somebody is not your friend, is not in your convoy and they, you kind of haven't allowed it, they can't grief you at all. You just pass straight through them. What happens here is every, every hour the server says, for anybody who wants to take part in this, get over here, you get the little message, you can set a route there, um, and a kind of radius appears on the map. Do skill songs return? Skill songs, yes, they do very much return. Um, particular favourite of mine. I will not spoil how you get them, because you will unlock them in a slightly That's different way. This is inspired from a, a real-life um, off-road adventure park, and um, it's translated really well. It's definitely one of the most fun areas in the game, I think, to, to play those um, playground arena type game modes like Infected and King. The mud looks incredible. So there's a system that analyzes the whole world for different dips and divots and finds out where water would collect. For me, it is the most visually different season. It's the biggest visual change, as Ralph said, so that comes with a whole new set of challenges. And as you can see, this is the north of the map, so we've got some real heavy, dense snowfall going on here. The more elevation you get in the world, you'll get uh, thicker snow. As you get a bit more south, you'll get like less snow, but maybe more frost, more wet roads, that kind of thing. This is our new way to earn skills and then spend those skill points on cars. And we decided, let's add a skill tree to every car. So drifting, wreckage, air, then you bank all of those points. You then earn skill points to spend here. You now get daily challenges. So they're like bite-sized challenges that you can do. The weekly challenge is all about getting into a, like a particular kind of special car. Do all four and you get all of the thoughts on points. And just wait for the perfect item in here that you want to get. How has it been kind of working with the team and like kind of getting this all put together? Like our job is to mainly focus around like um, the presentation of the game. So we're looking at like menu systems, uh, the hood, our menus are a lot more flexible, which is great because it allows us to be a lot more creative. Can you talk us a little bit more about the white space? Yeah, it's been a lot of work. You can kind of see it there in, in the background. One of the things we really wanted to do this time is be able to control the lighting conditions, some cool stuff to look at while we're waiting for everything to, to fall into place and load. Can we talk a little bit about the bonus boards Let's. in Horizon 4? It started in the very first Horizon game. We've found the fun in it, we've found the, the different types of gameplay that can be involved in finding and smashing um, a, a bonus board of which there are, you know, there are usually about 150 in the, in the game. I think we're going to the first one, all right? Do you reckon he's going to do it first try, right? So just to be, just to be clear, it's up in that top pipe there. Here we go, is he going to do it? No. There's, there's, there's too much of that. Feels really familiar. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. Oh. No, it's too short. In order to... Oh. oh, there we go. Right, we got the first one. We got the first yeah. one. Round of applause.
Play it on Xbox One.